Welcome back to Imperfect Parenting. Mm -hmm. Sitting here with my beautiful wife. Mm, thank you. The moment of my dreams. Mm. It's fun to be back here. We are we are doing the weekly thing now. Mm -hmm. Showing up every week. Here we are. Being faithful. Said we'd be here. We're here. We are here. And we should just kick it off right away with the thing that we said we love. The memes. The memes. You should read this one because this is a... Uh, very, very cute little face that <laughs> has is, lots of attitude in it. It has lots of attitude. It is a, clearly a newborn baby. He's probably less than three months old. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're probably at a solid. It's, it's at the stage where you still don't know what color their eyes are going to be. <laughs> so they're just dark. Yep. Dark and mysterious eyes. And you're and, and then he's he's got his hands kind of folded over. And the very, and then he's got his two index fingers resting gently. Very pensive uh, thinking state. Yes. Just gently over his lips and staring at likely his mother. Well, probably his, his father because it looks like this mother's holding him. So with this very serious little baby, newborn baby, it's, it's kind of his talking. If he, if he could talk or you could hear his thoughts. Or what's about to happen to you. This is what it's <laughs> trying to tell you. So the words say, how do I put this? You will never sleep in again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. You won't sleep in until they care about sleeping in. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, some kids get the miracle child where they are toddlers and they want to sleep in until. Yep. We don't like those parents. <laughs> we didn't get that <laughs> at all. Um, but I, now we do. I mean, with two teenagers and a preteen, we are now getting the sleep in stage. We were up before them most days. It's not sleeping in now. It's going to bed. Like, That's we're going part. to bed. We are leaving. You need to go to your own room. Well, I feel like little kids would stay up too. So, sure. That's true. But they, they can't because they're up at six in the morning. So you're like, you've got to go to sleep. It's just a much earlier bedtime. We're starting bedtime yes. way earlier with yes. little kids. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm definitely in bed. It's 10 o'clock. I'm like, I'm going to sleep. I love you. You should sleep too. But <laughs> it's I encouraged. I'm not going to make you. Um, but they, they sleep in now. So um, there's hope for you. That's right. I'm, I'm speaking to you, those who believe this to be true, that you'll never sleep in again. You will. It's you coming. will. Just hold on. So... That's our meme, um, and it, it, it definitely feels true when you're in the in the thick of it. But yeah, so fun well, stuff. Well, let's kick this one off. Um, there's there's so much to talk about, and I keep thinking about your book as well. There's just so yeah. much in the book. We're just we're just gonna pound my book. We are um, really trying to encourage you to go get it. Which this this episode today is gonna um, hit some pretty pivotal parts in there mm -hmm. that you you really dive into. So if you like what we talk about. Go get the book. Imperfectparenting.co. There you go. There's also a conference. There's a conference coming. You don't want to miss it. The beginning of May. That's true. So, what were you going to say? Sorry, I interrupted You're you. good. You're good. We, we have each other's thoughts often. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> we think very differently. <laughs> <laughs> Just sounded sweet. It's not true. Sometimes, sometimes we share thoughts. Most of the time not. But, but uh, I think there is a, what I was going to say, okay. and, and I'll let you... Mm -hmm. Fill in the blanks. Okay. <laughs> is there is a standard yes. that every parent wants in their home, mm -hmm. but isn't always sure how to get. Right. And I think we are the ones setting the standard. So the, the standard currently in your home mm -hmm. is probably there, most likely, because you set that standard. Absolutely there, because you set it. Yep. Um, so whether the standard is the children rule the house, mm -hmm. because you're afraid to, or you're exhausted, or... Um, it's ruled by fear yep. because you don't want the children to rule the house. And so we have to be drill sergeants yep. and um, control and fear run the house. Or it's, you know, I don't know. Seth, I think at one point introduced the snowplow parent, you know, where I don't want you to feel the mistakes of your parenting. So I'm just kind of picking up for you. And, I, I remove every obstacle. Yeah. So there's, there is a standard. Yep. There is a culture. I say, you know, culture happens one or two ways, on purpose or on accident. Mm -hmm. You know, which is funny. I don't even think that quote made it into the book. It's so good. How? I know. That's probably my most quoted <laughs> moment of Brittany Serple. I say that all the time. <laughs> I, I haven't even stolen it yet. Maybe That's it's still, the next book. I still quote you. <laughs> Maybe it's the next, next book that comes yeah. I don't think it's in there. But it's true. 
Absolutely true. You've got to figure out what it is that you're shooting for. What it is that is the standard? What's the culture you're creating? But with this, you know, we, in the book, I, I'm talking about a God's design for family. And, you know, this perfect design of family, it was, we were still in the garden. Well, we're not, in case you forgot. We're not there. We all have clothes on. We're dressed. I'm actually really grateful for that. But <laughs> there's cameras in the room. There is cameras in the room. You probably maybe not so grateful Move on, for it. Quickly. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but this this original design for family would have we would have stayed completely connected to God. Yep. We would never have fear and um there would be harmony and peace. That was the original design. Well, that feels like a really far away possibility uh, most of the time, yeah. especially if you got toddlers running around. So trying to get back to this place of where are we looking for a standard? Because now more than ever, everything digitally yeah. will influence our standard. Yeah. Um, I I have a love-hate relationship with, with social media. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that it's has great things on it. It can be an amazing tool and it can be so destructive and it can, it can feel really hopeless. Yep. Uh, you know, I have a friend who is, uh, she's got a lot of followings on social me media and I, I love listening to her. She's so much fun. And I also love that her house is always just messy and she's totally cool with it. She's like, whatever, this is how I am. <laughs> Take it or leave it. And I was talking to her the other day and she's talking about how the, the, the people that are, get really nasty and she's like, you don't live in my house. I live in my house and I don't care about my house as much as I care about the other things, which is, you know, again, we have we have more of intimate of a view of anyone's house or our lives than we've ever had because of social media. Yep. But because of that, I think it's easier for us to put on a pedestal different people yep. to create our standard instead of what is the Lord's design for family and what is that standard supposed to be? Yep. So we've gotten distracted on what is the standard that we're supposed to be creating in our home, not what are these really cool Christians doing on social media? <laughs> it's true. And so social media should not be setting the standard. No. For your culture, for your home. But it's true. I mean, it's it's enticing because it looks attractive. It looks like Especially when I everything's that. perfect. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. I would love to have some of those homes. I totally. would. I'm like, you know what? It looks like you just painted it If I trusted it Lincoln with a white couch, he would have one. <laughs> But I don't know. I could handle a white couch. I actually, that's true. We have a white bedding in. Okay, hey, okay, hey, sorry. hey. Go ahead. Say what you're going to say. I'll talk about me. Mm -hmm. You talk about you. I'll practice. I'm practicing. <laughs> Just to your point. That was funny. I'm fine, by the way. Um, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that that point you're making that the standard really does come from the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, when God comes back in the garden after the whole episode in in Genesis, and He says, "Who told you you were naked? Mm -hmm. You you changed the standard." Something changed in what you believe to be true. Yeah. Who told you that? That's one of the most powerful moments for me in the Bible. And God's like, I I can feel the distance you've created. What's what's going on? Mm -hmm. So I think for me it starts with that is is even us as parents, mm -hmm. individually and together, is closing that gap between us and the Lord. That that I'm not looking to social media, I'm not mm -hmm. looking to my children, I'm not even looking to the church to fill this void. Mm -hmm. I'm actually looking to God that that you know, uh, Jason Valentin told us this question, and we, we may say this in different places on here, but the the question is, God, will you come father me in this area? Mm -hmm. Just the invitation that that I I want to be a son yeah. or a daughter. That's that's that that's my standard and my my placement in you first, so I can lead from that place, and not like I have to match up, I have to be perfect, I have to look like something. That this is this is where it flows from. Mm -hmm. That I'm closing the gap between between me and the Father, and having a healthy balance of. Um, I think that the other thing that happens there's a I don't statistically, which I know that people make these things up on the spot, but I I did hear from a very reliable source our daughter Adeline, <laughs> 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 who is in a social media class mm -hmm. in her school right now. Um, is that 80% of TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff are women. I don't know about Facebook. I think Facebook probably has a higher percentage of men, but th that's mostly women. And what I've seen is a lot of this is women with their children. And this the thing with these standards is 
you know, we start to create different priorities. You know, we've talked about um, Stephen Covey's uh, roles lately, and that's been a topic we've been going through with our um, online school and stuff that we're doing. And the it's so easy that to our our standards in the home kind of get this skewed version when there's too little of you or too much of me and mm-hmm. not enough us and and because we switch around the priorities of our role so I, we I was just having this conversation with somebody about um, if your top three roles is I'm a, a daughter of the king I'm a wife I'm a mother but what it looks like is really I'm a mother mm-hmm. I'm a daughter of the king and then I'm a wife my standard for all these things and how these flow don't line up with that design for family that God had originally. We, we just start to, to give value and priority in the wrong spots. And again, on, on social media, I love it. It can be a beautiful thing. But there's a lot of women, and there's a lot of women and their kids. And I, I scroll through all these things, and I'm like, where are all the dads? Mm-hmm. We need these fathers. And I, I love Dr. Meg Meeker. I talk about her all the time. And her, she's just banging this drum of fathers you yeah. have to be present you have to be engaged you are needed you are wanted i say it all the time too because I, I i know this is huge and so much of you know setting the standard is what is god's design for family and what are we chasing after and are our priorities in the right spot and are we looking to him for the that truth and and i think even the thing you're talking about um, starting with the roles is when there's disorder, when it, when it's out of order, I'm looking to the wrong place to get significance, mm-hmm. to get value, to, to, to get purpose. Mm-hmm. So even that piece with dads is when, when there's disorder there mm-hmm. and, and there, there's an opportunity to, to have right order, I think that's what skews our children too. Mm-hmm. And there, there's so many parts of that story. You know, there's, there's broken homes, there's, the, the list goes on. Mm-hmm. And, and what it isn't is you're, you're, you're lacking because you're missing a dad. Mm-hmm. I think if the dad's in the home and, and he's disengaged, you're actually out of order. Yeah. When the dad re-engages, it brings the right order, which actually brings the kids what they need. Mm-hmm. I, I had a conversation with a, a mom, single mom, recently divorced. And, uh, you know, the Kylo show, we talk about whole healthy people create whole healthy families. Yep. And so you work on being the wholest and healthiest person person you can be right. and bring that to your kids. So have your right. So if you're not a wife right now, uh, you are a, a child of the king and you're a mother. And especially if you want to get remarried, you are paying attention to when that, when that role gets lit up, that it doesn't go get bunked below the kids. Yeah. It's got to move into its rightful spot. So, you know, again, standards that we're going after, I think are, are, universal for any family dynamic, whether it's even grandparents parenting their grandchildren, foster parents, adoptive parents, all that blended families. It's, you know, going to what are we actually trying to create, chase after, who we're getting our standard from. Hey, it's Brittany here. I'm normally on the Kylo show, yes, but I wrote a book I wrote a book for parents, but I talk a lot about moms. So if you're listening to this and you're a mom who's frustrated, who feels like you're failing, who feels hopeless in this game of parenting that we're in, I want to invite you to read my book. It comes out Mother's Day this year, and I picked that day on purpose because I know that church is attended the most on Mother's Day, and I've met with so many moms out there that want to do this well. And so do I, which is why I wrote this book. I know that connection is the goal and perfection just gets in the way. So if that's you, mom, buy yourself this gift on Mother's Day. It's gonna be worth it. So I hope that you feel blessed and encouraged by my new book, Imperfect Parenting. You can find it at imperfectparenting.co. In my book, a lot of the the main chapters are the seven pillars. And I still the seven pillars. Um, I mean, at least a lot of the descriptions, obviously, they're in problems. But I, I, I've learned to love their description from Keep Your Love On. Mm-hmm. And um, 
I think that is, I, I don't know when I started bringing them into my parenting toolbox, but it was pretty early on. I was, I remember teaching, um, the tools, you know, love and logic tools. I know probably so and whatever to all actually the children's <laughs> department. I would go in there and I was talking to these people that are setting culture in their classrooms yep. and knowing that they have very limited influence and access because they're only with these kids for like an hour and a half or whatever, two hours maybe. And it was all about what are the standards that you want to build in your environment that these kids come into. So kind of like, Always and never in, mm -hmm. in a sense. And so if you don't know what the seven pillars are, we'll list them. Do you want to list them? Well, I, 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 you should list them because it's, it's in your book and you've done a really good job owning these. I was just going to say um, the, the piece right here is, is you have taken these from Keep Your Love On and Proverbs and your dads, and, but you have really have made these your own. I think even some of the ways you describe this in your book um, mm -hmm. has a different spin mm -hmm. just because you're different. It's, I'm very you say it differently. Very different. But I, I love love some ways that you have weaved this in just a little bit differently because it's, it's really helpful. So go ahead. You should read the seven pillars. So the first one is love, which I mean, basic description there is um, we need safety and connection mm -hmm. for love to thrive. Honor. And uh, honor is it's not just about getting respect. I think that's a lot of where honor gets skewed for me because I think you can respect people but not necessarily honor them. Yep. Um, value. And, yep. Having a value for this connection with them. Self-control is, I'm manage myself. I think self-control, a lot of it comes in self-awareness as well. Responsibility, uh, ownership. I, I love, I love giving my kids responsibilities. It's one of my favorite things. It's, well, I think I, I was just with Lainey and she had to do something with, at the doctor's and she's got to fill out this online prescription thing. And I said, why don't you do this? Yep. You can do it and you can have all the information. And she's like, why? I'm like, well, you know, you're about to leave the house. So this should go with you. <laughs> she's like, okay, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's going to be fine. It's just some medicine. Uh, trust, you know, really kind of displaying the, this place of telling the truth to yeah. one another. And um, living in a vulnerable space is, is something that we really um, put high value on. Faith, not becoming our source for our children, but teaching them how to go to the source and how then to pull from that source to give life to others. Yep. And, and vision is a huge thing that um, keeps us motivated to be chasing after the passions that God's put in our in our heart. And uh, that's... a uh, a big thing. So those are those are I think they're just key key chapters. I go into a lot more details and a lot more fun stories and practical help in between um in there. But that's those are the the bulk of the chapters. There's ten chapters in this book. I just finished the audiobook, so I do read it. You get to hear more that's of awesome. my voice if you want it. So that's yes. Eh. <laughs> You you want as much as you can get. Yeah, it, it, I I think it's such an important piece right here because um, someone could read this or or see this list and go, "You want me to do all those things? Mm -hmm. I, I have to figure out all that stuff." <laughs> well, you just figure out one at a time. Yeah, and they're probably in you. They just haven't been cultivated, or you haven't haven't put it at the top of your priority list and and made room for it. Mm -hmm. So I I think my encouragement as you listen to it's even even this podcast and you go get the book and you read that and. You see, it and keep your love on. It is slowly implementing. How am I doing in this area? Mm -hmm. What's showing with my kids? Because when it starts to show it with my children, mm -hmm. then it's now in the culture. Mm -hmm. I remember Bill, Bill Johnson said that years ago at at, at the church in, in Reading that when when it starts to happen with the children, you know that that it's catching on. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's the same in the home. Yeah. So just paying attention to how am I doing with these standard setting values with these pillars that when in place, it actually creates the culture we want to live in. We want to perpetuate and give away. Yeah. Uh, and I, I want there to be hope around that they're doable, Yeah, that they're attainable. And, Absolutely. And, and, you know, some seasons, one is leading mm -hmm. the, than the other, you know. I, I wouldn't say that they all go dormant. That's not the goal, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm checking on all these different things that I say are important to me 
and keeping them moving. And again, some of them, you know, we're really practicing keeping safety and connection because the season is requiring it. Yeah. Um, and other seasons we are really going after, okay, this is personal responsibility. We are practicing personal responsibility. And Someone asked me this week, what's one of the main practices in your home, do you think, that shows up? And the first thing I thought of was it's it's actually truthing. You know, and one of the tools or skills that we have brought into a home and workplace and everywhere we go mm -hmm. is the practice of truth because we want to have deep trust. And so, you know, it's, it's just fun when you stop for a minute and look, you go, oh, there's that one. Okay, we'll practice that one. Yeah. And again, like you said, it's it's in you. I, I, I think it. I in my book, I'm just trying to help you see different ways that it manifests yeah. and and looking for little adjustments yep. um, to make really big impact. That's great. And um, you're such a genius. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's just it's it's about the journey. It's not about a necessarily arriving at perfection, but about the journey. Um, what is Miley Cyrus? It's the climb. And that's what you're it? No, um, definitely not. Can I ask you real quick? Why? I mean, I, I, I can talk about even even my thoughts, but why did you catch me to this one and put this in the book? I'm really practical. Not not a surprise to any of the listeners of this show or the Kylo show, and, and even in my book, I'm really practical. So, clarity hmm. and being able to feel like okay. I want love to manifest, and I need to understand a description of what am I looking for with that. What does that look like when my kids? It shows up in my kids. Okay, not I'm not talking about just kindness. I'm talking about love, like mature, intimate love in siblings. What does that look like? Hmm. I I so I that's part of why I think these felt so. They, they hit a, a nerve in the best kind of way because I they felt like this is there's some clarity to me being able to um, hit the target with success uh, and and that that search for perfectionism that is you know I'm it can get really messy really quick and so these these pillars kind of just created this place of okay as long as I'm I'm leading here and we're creating a standard and I feel like I can be successful and I re relieve myself of the pressure of trying to be perfect but I've diving into these exploring them and learning they actually they thrive when we're connected um and again they different ones show up louder than others at different seasons so Great. um that's probably the biggest reason why I love it I'm not sure if I actually ever asked that question specifically so it's good to know myself. Yeah. Well, does that feel true? Yeah, absolutely. And and you are very practical, and and you do a great job, I think. And and the partnership we have too of of paying attention to these things and how we doing. Okay, that one's waning a little bit. Let's let's add add some strength to it. Yeah. It, and it always reveals itself. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's true. <laughs> okay. You know, like what's that noise? Really fun responsibility one that just showed up for us was, uh, I came home one day. And the kids are in charge of feeding the animals, right? Mm -hmm. And I came home one day, and it was like 4 o'clock. And I know that the animals have all been fed and everything because uh, the gate is open, and they all get to go out in the pasture. And they come home, and the gate's closed, thinking, hmm. I think you were sick that day or mm -hmm. something. So I then come in, and I'm like, hey, guys, because they're all just hanging out in the living room or in the kitchen. I'm like, did the animals get fed today? And they all have this blank stare as they're going back and forth to one another and then back to me <laughs> as I'm just I probably didn't have a very fun face on because I was like these animals have been starving and I'm sure if they had not been fed and the reason why is because they all got up a little later rolled right out of bed went straight to their classes online and then just forgot so, I was mm -hmm. like, mm. so then we had to have a conversation about some responsibility things it's fun too because they have adjusted yes there's also a consequence now that it has a little more clarity. Uh -huh. I understand a little uh -huh. bit better. Uh -huh. It's a consequence when you decide to not carry your part of the responsibility here. Yeah. Which I think was we let them know that all of their devices would live in our room until the animals were fed. Again, the next day. Until the next day. Or the next day if you wanted. Yes. Or the next day. Yeah. Yeah. So So they, they figured it out. Yeah. Let's let's jump in this question real quick. Because this is this is a common one. Uh -huh. I love both your podcasts, they said. There you go. 
but I need some more ideas on are you tired or need something to do? My almost three-year-old daughter is very strong-willed and always looking to challenge me. I've tried this already and she finds any ideas, any of my ideas fun and loves to, to still be awake. She's my Delaney. That's what she said. <laughs> so she's needing some help Age as appropriate. a three-year-old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually, I, I think you should stick on the, are you tired or you need something to do? I had a client a while ago that her daughter was a little bit older. I think she was four, maybe five, but I, I think she was four. And she said that every time she gave her a job, the kid was just so giddy about it and loves that she was washing baseboards and she was, you know, um, wiping down the walls and the tables. Like, So she, the mom was not having any fun. And... um so I said, why don't you have her clean, do the, the same exact thing every single time? Mm-hmm. And so this mom picked a plate, a cup, and a spoon. And the little girl had to wash it over and over again until she was tired. <laughs> so she had a soapy sink. A really dirty plate. And so she'd wash it, and then she'd bring it over to the clean That's water, awesome. she'd rinse it, and then she'd have to dry it. And then she'd have to do it all over again. The same thing. And um, because this kid just nothing. Unfazed. Yeah, unfazed. So obviously it's a three-year-old. So what can a three-year-old do? Probably wash walls and baseboards. Um, So that's probably the best choice to be giving them. Or, you know, I, I would have them put the books away, take the books out. Put the books away, take the books out. It's. It, it's less about creating a bunch of chores, especially mm-hmm. if it's a child that's totally cool with this idea. Another thing that we did do with Delaney was um, we just had her sit in a chair yep. in a room where we were not. Yep. And that was her tired or you need something to do. And so that was... She's probably around three years old too. Yeah, and she she just wanted to be near us. So she didn't actually like that she had to sit in a chair by herself. Yep. I think she was in the kitchen and we were in the living room. Um yep. But then you could just hear her. (gasps) (laughs) (sighs) 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 Let me say, are you you tired or did you need to go in the bathroom with the door closed? And she would be quiet Mm because she didn't want that option. So I would suggest trying to do something that's boring and repetitive um, because maybe they enjoy the fact that they keep changing chores. Good. Helpful. I don't know if you have any other suggestions. No, I think that's probably all the things I would have said. I, I was thinking the, the chair one too, so you said that already, yeah. which that's what we did with Delaney, and it helped in that season, then we shifted it, she got older. Do you remember uh, one time with Adeline on the toilet? Maybe. Maybe. We It was tired, you need something to do. Okay. And I was tired. I think I was pregnant with Lincoln, so I was like, I don't have time to manage you washing baseboards and not soaking the entire floor with the <laughs> Tupperware container. So I told her she had to sit on the toilet. Obviously, the little... The lid was closed. But um, I said, when you're tired, let me know. You can go to bed. I kind of forgot that she was there because <laughs> I got busy doing something else. And I remember walking down the hallway and seeing the light on. And I was like, oh, that's right. She's in there. Do you remember? Is there any of this? She fell asleep. She did. Yeah. So she was on the back of the toilet. Yeah, that's right. With her okay. head on the back yes. of it. <laughs> totally passed out. Oh, that's not disgusting. <laughs> uh, at least she was like... It's kind of the equivalent to Delaney falling asleep in dirty laundry. Yeah. Adeline falling asleep on a dirty toilet. But the best part about Adeline was she was like, she had a mullet yeah, as a she baby. Did. She had no. We were concerned her hair wasn't going to grow. We, we were. She had barely any hair. Like it was longer <laughs> on the very top of her head, nothing on the sides. And then these ringlets in the back. So you walked in and it looked like little Billy Cyrus was like <laughs> laying on the toilet. <laughs> it's pretty funny. You've never called my daughter Billy Cyrus. <laughs> but that's what Our daughter. First thought that came to my I mind. I love it. That or Jared Culp. So there you go. He's got a mullet. Uh, Seth did have a mullet, but then he, he did. He cut it before he came on. Anyways, there you go. Our child had a mullet. Hmm. And um, those are some. That should be a podcast title. <laughs> Our child, Our child had, a had a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> we should get off before we make it. We're leaving. All right. Thanks for joining us. Yep. We'll see you next week. <laughs>